You're watching Morning at NTV. So good morning. You're watching Morning at NTV and it's real issues, real people. So we thought today we'd talk about something. Yesterday it was savings and retirement, but perhaps let's talk about how you earn. Not really what you do to earn per se, but how you rate yourself. Say you're earning 2 million, 500,000, 100,000, 1,000 shillings a day. How do you arrive to that? How do you say that I am worth 200,000 a month? When you are in that interview and they ask you, how much would you like to get paid? <laughs> what goes through your mind before you eventually give an answer? And when you look back at your contract today and how much you earn, do you believe based on your job description and what you end up doing, is that your worth? Are you being paid less or more? Are you looking at your peers in the same industry and thinking, I'm underpaid or I'm overpaid or I'm rightly so paid? How do you get to that value? Uh, let me just get your thoughts on that, Malala. Um, it's a big conversation and I'm happy that you're going to have that conversation today because um, many, when we did that survey, many came out and said that, you know what, I don't think I'm being paid enough for the value that I give. I feel that I'm being exploited and many a times when I try to actually raise that with uh, my bosses, then um, we just, you know, bashed off and told, you know what, if you cannot take this, then we'll just have to find a replacement. So mm. it's, a, it, it's a tug of war between employers and the employers, but that's a discussion we're going to have today, and I'm happy about it. Let's have the, probably the biggest one is that look at, for example, doctors and nurses said we want more money, mm. and uh, yeah. the, the leaders thought, bring in Cubans, because if these ones can't accept what they have and can't see that we don't have any money from the pool to mm. give to them, mm. bring mm. others. We have... Many companies that say, you know, when we agitated for a better pay, this, as you said, they said we can replace you. But I think this is it also. Outside of blaming those who actually employ us, we can blame ourselves as well. Many people think that I should get paid what Mala gets paid because we sit together. Not knowing that perhaps Mala brings more value to this table than I do. So sometimes some of us negotiate with the wrong ideas. We negotiate because our friends get paid the same. We negotiate because we had so and so who I don't like earns that much. We negotiate because it's what we think. Others negotiate because of their rent. <laughs> a good colleague of ours uh, in, the, in journalism, actually, Shanice Kachunjure, said that she hates it as a boss when someone comes and says, I'd like a salary increment. And as a boss, she says, okay, why do you deserve the salary increment? And the person says, you know, I used to live in Nigeria, but now I've moved to Luzira. So the transport now <laughs> is even more. <laughs> and she says, what kind of excuse is that? When you come to your boss, there are certain things you should not give as reasons. To or get an increment. <laughs> to get an increment. <laughs> Don't say, I now have three children. I used to have two. Now I have three children. The school fees, the milk, there's some reasons you should not <laughs> absolutely give. I've been in conversations mm -hmm. for salary increments. Mm. And I won't lie, I also made a couple of mistakes the, yeah, first yeah. the first time round because I used to be the one to give the excuse of, I had so and so's earning X amount of money. But me and me every day in the morning, I put in my hours, I stay overtime. Why am I not getting that? So, what you're telling your boss with that is that you want to earn exactly the other person's value, whereas you should be valuing yourself alone. So, later on in Take Note, I'll be hosting one of my colleagues in the business who's been there longer than I have, who has suddenly figured out how to earn his value. So how did he get to that? How did he rate himself to earn that much or that little? We won't say how much he does mm -hmm. earn, but he'll be walking us through how to rate and value yourself. Time check is 7.21. I'd like to also check in with uh, Andrew Chamagero to tell us um, his thoughts on that. And of course, what is ahead? Uh, but before we also get there, if you're online, tell us not how much you get paid, no, but how you ended up to what you earned. Some people are not... Um, employed by others. Some people are, you know, self, um, so, self yeah, employed yeah, yeah. and they have their own businesses. Mm -hmm. You have your own business actually outside yeah. of this. Yeah. And I'm wondering how you rate yourself. How do you get to say with my business, my consulting, I am worth X amount of money? How do you reach whatever rate? Um, the different factors that come into play when you're trying to give a rate to a client. Yeah. So for me in consultancy and training, then it depends with the number of people you're to train, okay. number one. Um, the level they are at and their needs, yeah? Because um, the needs vary from one entity to another. So their needs. Okay. And the other factor is how long then the training will take. Because there are companies that actually don't need so long 
because they're already at some you know point where they just need some polishing but the others that are starting so you need to invest so much into them so it, it, it varies and there's also the market rate mm -hmm. for the same thing so yes. all these factors have to come into play when you're giving your rates to your client but then how do you really know the market rate for example um, outside of TV mm -hmm. and radio I also MC actually the the, the my colleague who I'm bringing on later on also does the same thing as me. He also MCs, has been radio. But I was wondering how you know that my, my colleague gets paid this much. Because we come from a society where I don't feel comfortable sharing with my lad that uh -huh. I'm earning you know, 10 million, 5 million. I don't feel comfortable saying that. Or Mala will ask me mm. to try and get her rate and I'll lie to her. Mm. And then she's, she's having her information based off on a lie. So how, how do you get to get that information um for me in consultancy we have benchmarks so you do a benchmark with maybe someone who's doing similar you know a similar trade like yours mm. um, there's also international benchmarks but of course the international ones can never be comparable to here in africa no. so uh, the first thing is to get a mentor w when you're starting out in consultancy okay. get a mentor who will you know show you and help you to learn the ropes and how to rate and how they've been rating when they started to where they are at actually at because yes. when you're starting in um in, in consultancy then you there's that growth ladder that you need to you know put in perspective mm -hmm. because you just can't be starting you don't have the experience and yet you want to charge this high it will be crazy so you need to you know put that into consideration but so number one benchmark number two have a mentor to help you through. right yeah. and, and as she said even your experience is important if you've been in the industry for one year and you want to get paid as much as people have been there for 10 years mm -hmm. the lies on you so we do have Andrew Chamega we said he was actually in Gaba we're checking in back with him before we go into um, what he has to say Chamagero you have too many jobs. You are probably the highest earning <laughs> <laughs> person in this country. How do you negotiate? First of all, when you say, when you say that uh, we, can, we can disclose how much we earn, yes, it's true. But the reality is I base on what is in the industry and what is actually trending. If I'm going to host something at Serena, you don't expect me to take it actually below 2 million Ugandan shillings because I look at the crowd, I look at the <laughs> ticketing, I'm like, there is money here. But then in Okugrawon, they change which fan and Flavian Mala, the reality is, here yeah, it's a deal. A guy will walk to you and will say, I have this job. It is that simple. So that's how we negotiate on ground. When you, when you weigh and you say, okay, they're going to give me 200K in just one day. And I, someone is hustling this for a month. So 200K, it's a goal. The guy will be like, I to get to Kore. So when you ground the chirara deal, you will have to to What I've heard from you and yeah. I actually heard from Mala is that you charge certain yeah. companies or people based on who they are. <laughs> so if you meet Their someone profile, yes. with more money, you charge them more uh, money. Uh, uh, you can take the same deal from you charge them more money. You can take the same deal from Omuntu Wawansi at less money. <laughs> Absolutely. Omuntu wa wansi wa banga zima maleta kachai kang. Omuntu wa bazze ku ground. Nangamba anti na yanzi zanyabo. Nangamba anti dilo eri wo just Chama gero omuntu wo ya he wants to say something to you. Please he has he might have some uh, chapatis in the cavera. This one. No 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 he's o ina chapati omu. Tai na chapati. Anyway he will give his opinion later. Omuntu wa bazze no ku ground ngo kubye nyama smart fe ku ground tukuchaji nganyo trozo ina sent. Never young or is no you get a brunch in a fair to study that call. I I think what you'll do is take us to a break <laughs> because Chai Chai ka home. It's a good moment, and when we get back, it's going to be much more exciting. I have my fellas here in Gaba. They're going to be talking about all this thing of of wages and how much they should be getting and how do they go about negotiations in the next few minutes. You're watching Morning at NTV.